afternoon, everybody. It's nice to see everyone still made it after last night. And a lot of you didn't have much sleep, so I'm glad you've still come today. So we're from Night. We're a consultancy company, but we're also a software company. So first thing I want to do today is just say thank you. Thank you to everybody. This is my first E2E event. I was completely nervous, so I didn't know what to expect at all. So thank you very much for being so welcoming. I've met so many nice people and I'm going to be speaking to you guys for a very long time, I think. So, one of the things today, the Vatican are holding Mass, so I'm quite glad that everyone being in Rome, that you decided to come here instead. So we're making sure our marketing department knows that we're a little bit more popular than the Pope. <laughs> so, the question on everybody's minds today, I think the most important one is... Sorry. Frank. <laughs> I thought I told you to get rid of that one. <laughs> Don't make it Don't make it so I think it's safe to say my resignation will be on the desk tomorrow morning. <laughs> how, but how big is your suitcase? Because that's a seven set of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I buy you a new handbag? That's alright. That's alright. Don't know how many times more he's going to embarrass me in this one, so I'm just going to hand over to him straight away. I don't want to be studying going bright red every five minutes. So. Oh, you will. You will. Thank you. Thank you. So, everybody, Francesca. Big round of applause, guys. First time. Wow. Back on the pub forum stage. Nice, Brussels. Couldn't make Amsterdam. Not going to do it again. Damn it. <laughs> but hey, here we are in Rome. Um, as Lisa said, um, thanks to everyone. Um, it is at the night's first pub forum, it won't be its last, and thanks for making us all very well. It's much appreciated. Everyone hear me all right? Yeah. 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 Cool. Right, the question on your mind, who the is at the night anyway? So, as Alex said, I can't spend 20 minutes telling you who we are, who we work with. So the next 19 minutes and 50 <laughs> seconds, no, nope, not at all. Um, 2015, myself and Peter Jones set up a new consultancy company. That was the idea. It wasn't software, it was consultancy. And the idea was to be better than all of you. Because that's what everybody wants, of course. So anybody who does know Peter or doesn't know Peter, this is the guy. I actually emailed him and said, I need a photo of you. So he sent me one. This wasn't the one he sent me. That was the one he sent me. <laughs> Please. No, that was not one he sent you. Huh? The one he sent you was like... <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'll, I'll send you another one. I'll, I'll put a shirt on. I'll get my wife to take a photo. And I'm too late. I've got it. Um, as part of the consultancy we do, we're working with some very large projects and some very small ones. And we found that everybody had the same couple of problems. So, like I said, we weren't a software company, but there was nothing out there to actually fix it. So we started to develop our own. We have two pieces of software today. First one is DataSync. That's totally around AppSense. Both myself and Pete came out of AppSense. The biggest problem we know about is SQL replication. Absolute nightmare. So we developed a new product, Data C. I'm not going to talk too much about it, but if anybody does want to know about it, obviously, come and give us a shout. As I said, this one actually works. <clears throat> and we've also got Web Cache Manager. This is what we're going to talk about. All right? Designed initially to allow smooth roaming. Right? We've had endless problems with this guy. Right? And it's not just about the roaming side of it. We had masses of problems of getting the pack file down. And we actually had the support guy going through the code saying, this doesn't make sense. Like, this doesn't make sense to you. Actually, what it's like for us. But it's the roaming issue again and how that's changed. And, and the title of the slides at the beginning was, What's Microsoft doing with Rome? Because things are changing. If we look at what we call profiles on Rome, you know, things we all know about, 
and this is showing my age and I haven't aged well so if I get it wrong excuse me my memory isn't the same but in the good old days it was fairly easy I mean, my first Citrix installs was around 351 and Citrix Winframe in fact it was even 1.7 or even 1.78 at the time UP edit yeah, no one used it anyway, it was only for com based stuff, but the updater, it was only mini files, so everyone got the same sort of experience anyway. There wasn't a lot of customization. <clears throat> NT4 Pol Edit, yeah, great little tool, right? Allowed you to do some sort of customization, but the app stuff was still just mini files. 2000, we really started to use the registry a lot more. That gave us a lot more power. Windows 7 and Summer Call Vista. Anyone remember that one? Changed the profiles. We went to version 2. Version 1, version 2, and you can't go backwards and forwards. So these solutions came into their own. AppSense, Res. I believe AppSense yesterday talked about migrations from Windows 7 to Windows 10. Yeah? We spoke about that when we migrated from XP to Windows 7 as well. It's the same story, but it, it's still applied. This is where these guys came in. Then we've got Windows 8. Yeah. This started to introduce Windows apps, which again was self-contained now. We couldn't really manage them. You had V2 profiles or put a hotfix on and you went to V3. Great, even better management. 8.1, yeah, we've still got the Windows apps. V2 profiles again, or if you put the hotfix on, version 4. Oh, the hotfix, nightmare. And then, of course, time to upgrade. Windows 10 and version 5 profiles. Great. 10.1, version 6 profiles. What are Microsoft doing to help us here? How are we doing these migrations? Because no one migrates everything overnight. If I go from one thing to another, it takes time. Unless you are Windows 10, in which case you've got no choice, because Microsoft just give it. There you go. All right. What we are seeing with Windows 10 and 10.1 is again a move from where settings are stored. So rather than the registry, rather than app data, right, we're looking at database files starting to come into play. Right? Start menu, I'm sure everybody's spoken about the start menu in Windows 10. How do you manage it? How do you personalise it? Yeah, we can sort of do this, we can sort of do that. <coughs> and the store apps or the Windows apps or the Metro apps or whatever they're called today. Have you seen the size of local app data? That's where everything's stored. That's where these apps are stored. You know, we're doing a big uh, implementation at the moment in the UK using Office 365 and OneDrive. Users share in the machines, but they're all got to configure OneDrive. And what it does is it takes the whole lot, dumps it in your local app data. Great, because the next guy comes along and I take the whole install and I dump it again. Yeah. Local, local, can't roam. Internet Explorer, where we're focusing on for this piece of for this talk. Before to version 10, again, life was much easier. History, yeah, it was a folder with shortcuts. I want it, I take it, and I just move it somewhere. Or I can redirect it. Dead simple. Cookies, guess what? Actually the same thing. Cookies are just small files in a folder. Redirections, fully supported. I can copy them out, move them around, do what I want. Give everybody that consistent experience while they're browsing. Temporary internet files. Yeah, well, don't worry about them. We usually just let them go anyway, because what's the point of keeping them? Might come back to that one. And then again, time to upgrade again. So, 12th of January, 
Only IE 11 is supported. Is everybody on IE 11? People still doing projects to my brain. UK government is having a nightmare of a time because they've all told you've got to be compliant. And the rug's just been pulled out from under them. How many applications are web apps? So there's a lot of, pro of stuff going on at the moment to try and get people on IE 11. <coughs> And together with it, I said, nothing else is supported. So they're not providing updates for any other version of IE. So, when HTTP, win IE. Windows API, everybody knows what the Windows API is. Everybody uses it. So, win HTTP and win IE, just subsections of the API what's called do your internet commons. With HTTP version 5.1 released June 2014. Not really been updated since then, but still used. When INET introduced with IE4, so that's been there for ages. That's where things are being concentrated on at the moment. The real split between them is it says this supports things like FTP, cookie persistence, etc. Uh, here we go. Right. When I next, now the core of Internet Explorer. Basically, it's anything the user interacts with. You have to use when I And if you do any sort of login, you can turn on when I let login, when HTTP login. Within the event box, you'll see all the calls that are going on. But the guidance is anything which is user interactive is WinINet. Win HTTP, <coughs> suited for background columns. So where you've got a service that's talking to a backend server, use WinHTTP. Actually, it's a damn sight faster than WinINet. So actually, your browsing is being slowed down because of WinINet, but there you go. What we're looking at is something called the web cache file. Has everyone come across this? Am I talking to people who don't know the problem, or is everyone aware of it? Hmm? So, web cache v01 DAT. ESE database. Highly advanced index and sequential access method. Wow, where'd you get that one from? Google. Google. Okay. I thought we got all it from Google. <laughs> How do you browse to it? Hmm? Sorry? With what browser did you browse to it? Chrome. <laughs> right. Applications that use WinINet today write to the web cache file. Right. So although we're talking about Internet Explorer, as you see as we move on, it's not just about IE. There are other applications that will write to it as well. Okay. What does it contain? What's in this database? That's the location of it. Um, we did have beers. We did have some prizes. But Lisa being pretty nervous has drank them all. <laughs> so apologies for that. But everybody go and take a look. See what sort of size this file is on your own system. There's a web cache file. Starts off at 32 meg. About 32 meg for a bit. History. Well, guess what? It was a folder. We're now putting it within the web cache file. Not as easy to manage anymore. Cookies. Cookies, they're still files on disk. However, there's an associated index which again goes into this database. And you can't have one without the other. Enterprise mode. The bigger the enterprise mode URLs, they all go into the web cache file. That's where it gets read from. So yeah, you talk to a server, downloads it, sticks it in here. Temporary internet files. Yeah, it's getting bigger. Again, same thing. There's still files on disk, but the index for them is held within the web cache file. Compatibility mode. 
that goes in there as well. All the time, this file is getting bigger and bigger. How big does it get? The report looking around at an 8 gig web cache file. Are you going to run that? What sort of an experience are you going to give to your users? 8 gig extreme, possibly. 1 gig to 2 gig is very common. <coughs> Say, have a check on your own machines. <coughs> See what size this file is getting to. Right. Why are we using it? Well, index.dac files, remember them? Well, they were good, weren't they? They really worked. So now Microsoft said, we're going to replace it, we're going to give you that. Good job, we now have no issues, do we? Roaming Internet Explorer version 10 plus. So, for history now, we don't just have to worry about the history folder. We need some registry keys, we need the web cache file, etc. Cookies. Yeah, we've still got the folder with the cookies, but like I said, the index is held in the web cache file. Right. Cookie locations differ depending on your operating system. Thank you again, Microsoft. That makes it a lot easier. Folder redirection is not supported on IE 10 and IE 11. There's a lot of people talking about it. And then the temporary internet files. Yeah? Well, we got the folder, as we said before, but we've got the index. We've got the link between it all, all held within the file. And as we said before, we still think about disregarding temporary internet files. But all you're going to delete, if you leave it, is that not the rest of the information that's associated with it. So, web cache in Windows 7. Just change colour. That's what the file looks like. So you open it up, and what you have within it is all your containers. And as you can see, I've got cookies, I've got history, I've got another cookies, I've got my DOM store, etc, etc in there. L and M. John, L and M? Low integrity mode and medium integrity modes. So you have a enhanced protection mode within IE. So what happens is when the browser launches initially, it, it launches in medium integrity mode um, with the security sort of medium. And it'll check the, the folders that are present, so your low integrity folders. And if it not, it'll create them and it'll set the permissions on those folders. It'll then launch another instance, which is launched with a security token of low integrity, and it'll only have access to those specific folders. So it allows the browser to protect, to a certain degree, what areas of your computer the, the browser's got access to. It's basically twice as much data as we need now. So, it's not a problem. I'm going to go to Windows 10. Don't have to worry about it. There's a default Windows 10 one. As you can see, right, <coughs> in the two, can come back. Oh, wrong one. Okay. we've got a scroll bar here now that we didn't have before. There's a whole load more stuff in this file. Okay. So as well as IE, what you'll see now is, I'm sure if you can, one, two, three, four, five, there's hundreds of cookies folders. There's multiple temporary internet file folders or containers or something. And there's multiple histories in there. And there's still low, medium integrity stuff. Bear in mind the 8 gig one that I showed you before or told you about was on Windows 7, not Windows 10. So once he moves to Windows 10, I hope his laptop's got a sign attached to it. Because that's all that's going to work. Not a problem, I'm going to go Edge. Are well, you? Okay. Have a good time browsing the four sites that actually render properly. 
Microsoft are not going to release a new Internet Explorer. 12 is the last one. When we spoke to them about the issues here, the issues with the pack file, basically turned around and said, when we're looking through the code, yeah, we can see it's wrong, God knows what we've done, but we're not going to fix it. So we were setting at the time the pack file using the autoconfig URL registry key. That didn't work. Sometimes it got it, sometimes it didn't. We had to go much earlier in the process of now having to use DHCP to set it, which made things a nightmare when we've got to change it, but it's the only way we could get consistency out of it. But they're not going to fix it. So just be wary about what you get it. Edge is the future. Yeah. Right. Guess what? Edge goes in there as well and actually saves more data into it than IE does. Yeah, cash cookies, history, cash cookies, history, cash cookies, you name it. It goes on and on. Why is it that Windows 10 is even bigger than Windows 7? Why do we have so many problems? You remember when INET and what we said before? Right. With INET, the core of IE can also be used by other applications. It's the Windows API. Nobody's going to write their own, they're going to use the Windows API. All right? Because Doug kindly told us the other day, it's all about the app. Yeah? Windows apps. Go to the Windows Store now. So let's take a look at an app that we downloaded. Alright, so we went for the most business application we could find. Yeah. Candy Crush Jelly Saga. <laughs> Anybody guess as to why we went with this? Because it's there always? Yeah. <clears throat> Not quite. <laughs> no? You like the game? No, it was because we can't get Pokemon Go on Windows. Okay, <laughs> so we went with Candy Crush instead. That's it. Alright. When you launch it, it asks you to log in. Log in via Facebook. How many apps do that? How many talk to a back-end server now? That's it. We launched it, and guess what? Bang, we've got containers in the web cache file. And if we look inside the containers, can't see it very well. These are all the temporary internet files. What, from Candy Crush? So every time you're running your store apps and they're talking, Guess what? This file's getting bigger. So, I'm a consultant, you know, I've been doing this for years. How do I deal with this problem? What can I do? GPO. We have settings in GPO. Limit the amount of history I want to keep. Yeah? Fantastic. Does it delete all the history out of the web cache file? It deletes some of it. Does it reduce the size of the file once it's done the deletion? No. It's still gig, two gig, whatever it might be. What if I just save my cookie files? Forget my web cache because history I can probably live without. Temporary internet files, as we said, let's get rid of them. I just want my cookies, I'll just save the files. You can save them, you can restore them back. It will not read them. You need the index. The only way I can reference those cookies. Don't roam temporary internet files. We delete it, right? As you said, nobody's worried about it. No, but you've still got the information in the web cache file. So deleting the files isn't going to make this file any smaller again. And then the last one, which was quite interesting, was I actually go into IE and I hit the delete. And this is about temporary internet files, but we cleared everything out. Cleared my cookies, clear this, clear that. Guess what? The file actually got bigger because it recached the page we were on. Doesn't work. What can we do about it then? How do we fix it? Yeah. Let's ask Microsoft. We did. We've got a problem, guys. I've got. 200,000 user install, we can't live with this, what do we do? Um, we're aware that people have issues with that, 
they start to support call. They know about the problem. Right, what do I do? Yeah, when it gets too big, delete it. But it starts at 32 meg. I still have an issues roaming it today before a user's even logged in and done anything. Yeah, case closed. What's going on? All these version of profiles, we're now moving to self-contained databases. You know, what, what do they want from us? Yeah, that is that easy, isn't it? Microsoft. All you need to do is sign in with a Windows, uh, a Microsoft account. You know, we're using AD for Use a Microsoft account, because then we know everything about you. Okay? Well, everyone should have a Surface. Here you go. Roaming. Isn't roaming just mean that I pick this up and I go to another desk and put it down? What is this different machines? Yeah. Everything should be the Zor Office 365 and OneDrive. Again, one of the things we're working on, and people are believing a lot of the hype around cloud. I find it very strange, having done consultancy for so many years, we were always dubious about what people said. You know, we never take the first version. That's just dumb. People are believing it these days. Again, 200,000 user system, and guess what? No file servers. Why? Well, we could just use OneDrive. That's the only storage they have. Apart from that in SharePoint. Doesn't work, right? This is, you know, multiple users on the same machine. It's users that are roaming between many machines. And I've got to set this up every time. And then you give me a terabyte of storage. And when I set it up, it downloads a terabyte to my machine. Great for my network. Great for my 300 gig hard drive that's still in the machine that I've got. What's going on, guys? So, result. Terrible user experience. One way or another, you're not going to make the users happy. All right? We delete the file, as Microsoft tells us and your users lose those settings. And every time they go to a website, they get prompted for cookies again. Right. What does that mean for the apps as well? Right. We're into a bit of an unknown here. Right. If I don't have the cookies for the apps, if I don't have the history for the apps, is it going to work? I don't know. I.e., we all know, we're familiar with web browsers. Who knows what's right into the apps? And the other thing here is the file itself is locked throughout the session. Right? And it's the Win9 at the LLs that's locking it. Because guess what? That's what's right into it. So if I do need to delete it, I've got to delete it after the user's logged on. Right? Though there are third party apps that allow you to do it at log off time, but don't always work. Option two, well, I keep it and I roam it. How long are you going to take to log on as you copy an 8 gig file down? How long are you going to take to log off? How much is my network going to go up? How much is my storage cost going to be to save this file? This is one file on the Windows machine. It's causing so much pain. Option three, buy everyone a Surface. Yeah, Microsoft would love it. And as they say, we will handle it all for you. Not your problem. We can deal with this like Windows 10. Don't worry. Trust us. We will patch your machine and everything will work fine. Nobody's ever seen that before, have they? Yeah. It's Retamax's birthday in Ireland. It's in some time, John. <laughs> we need to keep control of things and it's starting to get out of control. V6 profiles with 10.1, they have relented a bit. <coughs> okay? So if you are using 10.1 and you are using roaming profiles, right, they have addressed the problem. So what happens now is your cookie file comes <coughs> along, and as it did before, it goes into local app data. Then, Record created, it gets copied. 
and it gets copied to roaming app data, and we get a cookie dump file. Yeah? The index dumps back. We got rid of it because it was a problem, and then we put it back again. So the idea here is what I can actually do is delete my web cache file that's in the local app data. The problem is Internet Explorer still reads that. So when you log in next time and you restore this down, all it then does is when you launch Internet Explorer, it copies them straight back into your web cache file. That's the solution. Right? That's not going to slow down my launch into the store. <coughs> and then what about history? What about store app support? Yeah. What about the temporary internet file and stuff? We're not really interested, are we? So we may come back to it. And as we said, it's only if you're using the roaming profile. We said before when we went from XP to Windows 7, we started looking at other profile solutions. How many just use roaming profiles today? Or how many have a third party solution? Yeah? So you guys are screwed because everyone's going to go back to roaming profiles. Sorry. <laughs> we simply fake it. That's it. Um, so, but that's what you do when you get screwed. No. It's it. So this is, you know, yeah. They're not showing a lot of interest in roaming. Everybody wants it in the cloud, you can do that, it's great, wonderful. Option four, right? As I was told, this the purpose of this was more informative. I have one slide on it. This is what it does today. It said we were a consultancy company, we're not a software company. We saw a problem, this fixes a problem. Bang, done. Right? Runs during log off. Its actions are determined by parameters, so you can specify what parameters you want. Yeah? I don't want to keep all my history, I want to keep my last five days. It goes in, it deletes the data out of the file for you. Bonus. Cookies, the same thing. Which cookies do you want to keep? Which old ones do you want to get rid of? Temporary internet files as well. Get rid of all the data out of the web cache file. Right. And then crucially, compact that file. Get rid of it, it's a database. Said so it starts at 32 meg. Most of that's white space at the beginning. But as you browse, it starts to fill up. So compact it, get rid of it, reduce the size as much as possible. Right. <coughs> Independent of the profile solution. I don't care if you're using roaming profiles, I don't care if you're using res, I don't care if you're using AppSense, whatever it is. Because we'll deal with the file, and then your profile solution will just roam it in whatever <coughs> way it's roaming before. Because it's now manageable. I can now do what I want with it. Comparing balls. <laughs> <laughs> I asked I, my... Uh, I found it. I found it. it. <laughs> yeah, I asked my friend for a picture of his balls and he couldn't provide them. So I had to go find them myself. Ah, I did, found the balls of steel. Um, being from the UK and a little bit Italian, um, we have bigger balls. <laughs> okay. Bigger balls, live demo. How many people? Sasha's been shouting at me for days. Don't do a live demo. Well, it was only consulting. <laughs> The problem was, somebody said there's a prize if the live demo goes right. Lisa needs that new handbag. So, I'll pass over to John. He can give you a demo. And then we'll come back and I'll give you a little bit about where we're going to next. And what we're sort of looking at. Okay. Hi, guys. Um, So mine is still bigger. <laughs> <laughs> they just work better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah
do today, guys, is just show you a really quick demo, which will only take a few minutes. So what I've got here is a 2008 R2 server, and I've got some test users on here. So the best part about this is I've been paid to sit there and browse the internet and play Candy Crush. Don't show your history for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we deleted this. So, uh, I'm just going to go through to this test user and have a look at uh, the size of his web cache file. So, as uh, Frank said before, it's located under local app data, uh, Microsoft Windows and web cache. And literally, uh, I've done simulated a couple of weeks of browsing over a day. And that file's already used up the white space to, uh, to fund the creation size, and it's now at 45 meg. So, if I now connect as that user. <clears throat> so, just show you, don't look at the URLs too closely, but I'm just showing you it's, it was trying to be a, a fairly representative of somebody who's just browsing at lunchtime. So it, it, it's not, there wasn't a, a spider that was going out and trying to find as much data as it could. It was just, like I say, trying to simulate the browsing. How many, how many pages were fleeing each site, did you look at? Just one. <coughs> oh, that's right, that was BBC. BBC, well, it's all, it's all the links and all the connections in there, isn't it? Because yes. they all appear as well. So, not a huge amount of browsing, but we did want to show you a 500 meg file. So just do it with a small one, and we'll see what we can do. So, uh, I've configured the system. So, we didn't want to upset anybody. So, we didn't want to use absence and upset the res guys. We didn't want to use res and upset the absence guys. The absence so, guys is gone. Right? Yeah, they've gone. Oh, I didn't know they were going to do <laughs> So, uh, I've simply configured this to run through GPO on user logoff and it will call it and I've asked that it to keep five days of history, five days of cookies, delete my temporary internet file data, and then compact the database at the end. So now I'll just log off as this user. <coughs> so what it will do though, is the first time it runs, it's gonna go back through all the data and cleanse, cleanse the data out. Once it's in there and it's running every day, it, it has less data to, to process. So the, the speed increase, uh, the operation time decreases. <coughs> well, now you can see it's gone through so far and it's been deleted, it's deleted the history before the 15th of November. And it's deleted cookie information before the 15th of November and deleted temporary internet information. That's finished. So, the, first, the execution time for the first run was 33 seconds. So what we've found when we've been doing some uh, tests for the white paper, your initial time, yeah, there's a little increase by 10 to 15 seconds, but then subsequently, we, you're gaining time, you don't increase the log off time even with the web cache manager running because you're not transferring the data up at the end. So we are taking some time, but we're giving a lot, lot of time back. It's that first run hit. If I go down from a month to three days, then I've got nearly a month to clear up. When the user logs in tomorrow, he's only got one day. So it's going to be much snappier. First time hit. So now, a web cache file, 24 meg. But what I've also found as well is <coughs> a better compression ratio now as well. So if that's down from 45 to 24. But also, you can compress it down to a meg. So all of a sudden now, copying a meg out, in and out, with a compression, <coughs> is a lot more usable. Just to prove that it has time to do it. There you go. So I've got five.
fact that one's five times with the first one. So, any questions? I told you it'd be quick, Emma. Uh, like five days cookies stuff like that, but, but you look at the date or? So we do based on access time. time. So whenever a cookie is, there's multiple in the, in the web cache file, and I might be able to go back and on the slides and show uh, the, the, the data within there. It has multiple time values. There's uh, creation time, access time, modify time. So with cookies, we base it on access time. Ah. Because the last thing you'd want is, setting it to a week and you, you create a cookie on the day one you browse that same website every day but then on the eighth day it gets deleted so it's based on access time and what about the website they didn't fish for a couple of weeks you need cookie and it comes up again with the cookie yeah so that what we found with businesses it's tuning it to their environment so cookies is the, the key one for a lot of businesses. The history, yeah, they, they wouldn't mind keeping a little bit of history, but it's the cookies one's key. So a lot of them are looking at like keeping three weeks of history, oh, sorry, cookies, and maybe a few days of history, just if the user went to a, a site a couple of days before. Um, but it's also the temporary internet information as well. Let me come back to your question as well. Back to the presentation. Yeah, sure. It worked, Sasha. Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't a bit of as well. Hey? It <laughs> does, it's like I said, all right? Believe me, we haven't been going long, all right? And we didn't set out to produce a massive piece of software. It's a problem. It's a problem we're all facing. How can we fix it? Right? And we could have sat there and we could have developed a lot more into it and put fancy interfaces on before we showed it to you. We haven't done that. We've made it do what it needs to do. All right, so you can take it and you can do what you need with it today to help you with your Windows 10 stuff, with your IE stuff, with your non-persistent desktops, because it will fix a problem. It will be better. We're still working on it. Because once we're looking into this, there's so much more that comes out of it. So the question around cookies, for example, all right? Rather than deleting the last five days, what happens if I provide you a list of sites? That's the ones I want to manage. I want to keep cookies for this site. And I don't want to keep them for all the others. I want to keep history maybe, I want to keep my temporary internet files. We dump our temporary internet files, but what if I could say, keep them for these websites? So it speeds up the browsing for those and dumps all the rest instead. You're getting a better user experience. Can you uh, do it on the top level, right? Do it on what, sorry? The wildcard in the top level. We're in the Netherlands, we have this cookie law, so when you go to a website and they use cookies, they need to show a pop-up and you need to accept, okay, I want those cookies. Yep. If they get deleted, <coughs> every time you get that screen and they're already annoying enough, so then, that's what I said, but if you don't visit the website for three weeks, and so it does the need to that. But that's where it comes to, like I said, if you, today does it by time, because that's what people have asked for. Yeah. But if you target, yes. And I say yes because it's not released yet, so I can say what I like. But, you know, this is the point of us being here. Back to what we said to Sasha this moment. We've done what we've done so far to hit a problem. All right? Where do you need this to go? The wonderful thing about both me and Pete is we're techies. We're not sales guys. We're about solving the problems. Let us know what you want it to do. This is the feedback we've had so far from the people that have seen it, and all of a sudden, it's brilliant. And right, this is what we're thinking of. That's then a game changer. Because we're heading towards proper browser management. As we said before, in the web cache file, 
all your enterprise mode information goes in there. Yeah, I've got to create service for my enterprise mode URL. I've got to edit XML files, which are great for techies that know how to do that. But if you just had an interface and it had a box, let's say, that had i9, i8, i7, you just paste the, put the URLs in you want, and it's all done locally. We're doing proper management of things now around it. Reporting, yeah? Big at all the things, compliance, reporting. I know every site and every page you visited and when you did it. Now, that is not just about how many times has my guy gone on Facebook. Right? It's about how many users are using the internet. So we said we were talking last night and users are now computer savvy. When they're at home, they're going to sites which help them to do things. You may find out that they're actually visiting some sites that do a PDF conversion or whatever it is for them, and they're using it for business needs. It's very, very important information. And with cloud and web apps and what have you, all the more important. What's the 10 most popular sites my users are using? I know there's other things that can give you the information. But it's there and it's very simple and it's readily available. Other browsers. Other browsers have similar things going on about how they store information probably have you. How important is that to people? Because everyone I'm talking to are all saying it's IE. IE is our business standard. But we give them Chrome as well, because IE sometimes fails. But we tell them Chrome's not supported. Give it the main times that's supported. Mm -hmm. Firefox, yeah, they're the main two we're hitting as, as well. How important are the browsers to you? Send them to sleep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it something we need to do for you? Is it something you're more interested in other things? Let us know. That's about it. And how we did for time, but there you go. That's it. Wow. Questions? And don't ask if she's single. You just mentioned other browsers. Would you have similar issues with other browsers, or is it only in the There are similar issues around um, Chrome. And my honest answer, I've not delved way too much into it. But Chrome still uses this idea of a database type file to hold information in. I've not done massive work, so I've not done all the deletions like we did and what happens if I restrict it this way. So I can't say yes for sure, but people are still saying they're finding issues. What I want to know is from us, do we need to spend a lot of time on this? Or if I get the Microsoft side right, is that where people want to go. Because again, the compatibility stuff is quite a big feature. I see, you know, loads of people are having issues with it. Give you a dead simple interface. Yeah. So my second question, like how many users are still using Internet Explorer? And I know that in enterprises it's the most used browser. However, when you look at like a private user, then it's definitely Chrome. So when you see it, do you see that the Internet Explorer will stay the main browser and enterprise? Well, Internet Explorer is, is dead, like I said. You know, they're not going to go any further. It depends on what they do with Edge. Like I said, you're using it today. People have used it. It's a nightmare. You don't find that many sites that render correctly. Mm -hmm. If the next Edge works and works well out of the box, people are going to use it. And I don't know about you, but with Windows 10, with me, Everything I'm running, all of a sudden, my file type associations have been set back to Edge. Push me that way, I don't know. <coughs> so, I think it's still going to be Microsoft. The home user market's interesting, because we have thought about home user edition. Home users obviously have a different issue. You know, and that's when we start looking at online banking and how cookies and things like that are managed for that sort of an environment. Mm -hmm. So it is something we've thought about, we've spoke about, 
Um, again, we're gauging interest. You know, like I said we started off in 2015, and we spent a year just consultancy, consultancy, and then all of a sudden it was, we do this. And we went from two people to eight people to more people coming on board simply because of this. You know, it's pretty oh. interesting. Please, only one fast question, and then to, because we have we speak, and yeah. it's almost half three. Yeah. Well, quick question: How much? <laughs> um, let's have a chat. Next word. <laughs> no, uh, the, 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 if you want the RRP for it, it's ten quid a year. Okay. That's the RRP for it. But you know what deals are done like, and what happens. <coughs> right. Okay.